All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. So uh, just to kind of reiterate what we talked about, our first segment, we talked about WWE NXT Review, our uh, AEW Dynamite Preview. Also, we talked about a handful of steel cage matches that, you know, inspired me when I was younger to kind of want to fight in like a steel cage and like, you know, fight with my brothers in the room and pretend like, uh, you know, like something was a steel cage and, you know, throwing them through the tables and, uh, you know, all that other good stuff. But um, I don't know. Next, we're going to talk about our Nikki Garcia is almost elite. So, um, you know, let's try this again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if um, let's see if technology loves me now. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. And oh, it works. Oh, my God. AI loves me after all. Maybe he doesn't want to destroy me in my sleep tonight. You know, but <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so uh, I don't know. That's so weird. Why didn't the other one work? Ah, it, ah. Anyway, breaking that third wall right there, guys. I'm like the CM Punk of WWE podcasting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so, um, so like I said before, former WWE icon Nikki Bella has admitted that she was very, 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 very close to calling Tony Khan for a star-studded ret- in-ring return that would have left the wrestling world on fire. And you got to believe that 110%. Imagine if you were, you know, a wrestling fan flipping through the channels, you would see AEW on TBS or TNT, and then um, you would just see Nikki Bella on there and you'd be like... Like, what the hell? Like, that's crazy. That's cool. Like, you know, I, they, they got Mercedes Monet on there. Very, very talented. They got a really like a handful of talented WWE stars, which is pretty cool. Uh, she ultimately kind of left the Bella name at the, uh, you know, of the WWE. Uh, Nikki spoke on the Nikki and Brie show, a podcast that she hosts with her sister, saying that when they saw Mercedes Monet make her AEW debut, they kind of thought about wrestling again. And you kind of got to, um, you know, you kind of got to think about it. You're like, is that something that maybe that Mercedes Monet kind of thought about? Like, uh, how can I influence other women, other pro wrestling women to kind of, you know, get up and kind of, you know, take their life by the control and kind of, you know, come out and do what they love to do, which is professional wrestling. And um, Nikki Bella almost, uh, you know, she almost got back into it. Um, she said, and I quote, how serious I got, I think I can maybe do a year at AEW and I can do it every week. She said, uh, Mercedes Monet, when she said, and I kind of realized this once when I saw her, uh, uh, Mercedes Monet, you know, her first in-ring performance, her, well, not her promo, her first in-ring performance as a, a promo as a AEW superstar. Uh, she said here, we're going to make the evolution worldwide and obviously everybody knows that's the women's evolution what she was referring to and uh you know obviously wwe just recently has gone kind of uh kind of global with uh saudi arabia france uh scotland uh puerto rico but uh aew they're kind of like like i said before you know they're they kind of have that they kind of have that open forbidden door where they wouldn't, where they, you know, where they're with New Japan Wrestling or Ring of Honor or Impact Wrestling, where these guys travel all over the world. Like it's crazy. This is something that probably the WWE women's division sorely needed at that time. Uh, obviously, you know, that didn't really, you know, come to, um, come to par but um i don't know i just think that's pretty cool how when mercedes monet kind of said that and i kind of knew that comment was kind of like gonna rattle a couple of pages from the media but um ultimately um so nikki announced that uh brie and nikki uh were kind of heading for a new chapter when when they left the wwe which kind of made me think that maybe they do have a you know maybe they could have a future in aew and to be honest as a as a most prominent mostly wwe fan i want to be upset i would love to kind of see these girls go out there and still kind of do what they do uh both of their moms now kicking ass taking names hosting a podcast obviously you know uh they are really like when you think about the wwe women's evolution you got to think about the bella twins 110 percent. they you know they absolutely killed it so um you know um, and you also had newly signed WWE superstar Jade Cargo kind of, sh- you know, kind of shower flowers on Nikki. You know, she kind of said, and I quote, I would love to get into ring to the ring with her, meaning Nikki Bella, uh, one of the most talented wrestlers in the world, both women and men. 
And um, I don't, that's just pretty cool right there. You know, Jade Cargill is a rising star in the WWE. And just know that she's, uh, she's you know, she looks forward to a lot of uh, women's revolu evolution uh, wrestlers like uh, Nikki Bella was. So obviously she wasn't that like, you know, that person to kind of be tossed to the side or anything like that. So, you know, she was definitely, you know, one of the wrestlers that, or if not the wrestler to start the women's uh, evolution. But, um, you know, uh, the, women's, uh, the, the WWE Women's Evolution kind of took place and started in 2015, where women, uh, they kind of got more um, more opportunities like the males do to kind of shine. Uh, they were able to cut promos. They were able to have longer matches and longer screen time. Um, it's crazy because even that kind of perpetuates into what's happening now in the WWE and a lot of WWE women's division superstars like Piper Niven. Uh, once when WWE announced the new show Speed on X, uh, which is uh, three minute matches, Piper Niven said uh, on social media, three minute matches, ladies, it's our time to shine. Wait, what do you mean? It's not for us. Kind of like, uh, you know, I, this is like a personal, like little jab that um, women's wrestling, you know, throughout the years and throughout the generations of wrestling, their matches were kind of like around that time. We're kind of like around like three minutes tops. Mostly we want to focus on the male superstars. And um, I don't know, it was, you know, absolutely pretty crazy. But um, I, you got to you gotta acknowledge, you know, Nikki, Nikki and Brie were absolutely sensational. They were trailblazers for the women's wrestling, for not just in WWE today, but all around the world, which is, you know, pretty cool, um, honestly. Um, she said, um, you know, and I quote, we needed to find a way to be treated like the men were treated. Um, they want to be treated equally. Like, what's wrong with that? And uh, she said, we wanted the best for everyone. The women were miserable, working so hard on WWE events. And when it comes to Raw or SmackDown, kind of being disappointed. So essentially, they were kind of exploited. They were kind of like, okay, we're going to give these uh, WWE live events, which aren't televised, kind of more like the women's wrestling, kind of, you know, kind of throw out that trial balloon there, see how it does. And, um, and she also said in the interview that um, the women's wrestlers, they kind of came together during this evolution. They came together, they talked, and they were like, look, like, no one's kind of out there to kind of like, I'm going to go out there and get mine. Uh, if someone got attention the night prior or the night before or on SmackDown or Raw, they're like, all right, let's give somebody else a chance. Like they were able to kind of like coagulate together and come to an agreement that this isn't just about individualistic, you know, goals here. This is kind of like us as a company kind of starting this um, kind of starting this new age wrestling where women ultimately you know, they are as great as the men. Obviously, you see it in WWE now. So they did a great job. If you see it now happening today, where you see uh, women, I mean, events in WrestleMania and stuff like that, like they deserve that 110 percent. They they put their bodies through as much pain as the boys do, and sometimes they go off and have kids, and they put their bodies through pain just you know more than the boys do. So uh, you know, it's super cool, super cool that uh, you know Nikki and Brie Bella were kind of like there to kind of do it. And, uh, you know, obviously throwing flowers there, definitely they deserve it. They're definitely some of the best um, wrestlers of all time. Definitely respect them. Definitely still think about them to this day. Um, that, they're actually my wife's favorite superstars when she kind of was into WWE. She still is, but she just watches the pay-per-views and stuff like that. But uh, I'm the only dork that just like watches the, you know, the shows every week. I'm like uh, excited to see more, you know. Um, and I don't know, it's a... Uh, it's pretty darn cool. You know, you got to respect them. They had a vision. Um, they made it come to life. And they did what they had to do to change the landscape of WWE for all of women, for all the women wrestling during the time, during their time. And actually, you know, definitely during uh, for aspiring uh, women's uh, wrestlers looking for a career in uh, professional wrestling. That's something that per probably a lot of people don't really think about to this day. And they're like, you know. Oh, it was cool to see Nikki. Now she's on Barmageddon and, you know, she was dating John Cena and now she's dating the guy from Dancing with the Stars. Well, I think they're married and they uh, they have a kid. But I, ultimately, like, she did not want to go back to wrestling, the grind and stuff like that because uh, she's trying to take care of her son who was born in March of 2020. So, you you know, as, you know, as a, you know, as a father, as a father, I think that's, uh, you know, I would definitely, you know, take a time away from my career to spend time with my kids because I love my kids to death. They mean the world to me. They're my number one. And, um, you know, definitely nothing is, you know, nothing would ever, ever go over. You know, if anybody's like, hey, you can have a match with uh, Shawn Michaels, your favorite superstar when you're a kid where you had posters up 
you know, even as a grown man, you still have posters of Shawn Michaels lining your room. And, you know, you can fight them at WrestleMania or you can attend your uh, your daughter's uh, uh, award assembly where she gets like, you know, soon of the month. I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to take that job. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'll be like, you know what, dude? You know, I love my daughter. You, gotta, you know, these are precious moments and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you know, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think that's and Tony Khan actually said to uh, you know to the media that they would love to have Nikki Bella back obviously they mentioned uh Daniel Bryan uh Brian Danielson oh you guys caught me again you know whenever i do a podcast about AEW if you guys count how many times i mess up uh, uh you know his name uh you could pro- you know <laughs> write it in the tips of donations link you know and uh i will give you a dollar every single time i'm, I'm just kidding no, i'm just kidding no but uh, i don't know and um like I said before, they Tony Khan told Nikki Bella that, hey, like your family, your sister is married to one of our guys and uh, he's family. He's been part of this family. He's kind of been part of that AEW movement to kind of, you know, going, kind of going against the WWE in terms of ratings and stuff like that, which kind of brings up another point. I, you know, if AEW hopes to stay around, Dynasty needs to kill. Dynasty needs to sell out. Dynamite tonight should look absolutely packed. Rampage, Collision, they're gonna have an, um, you know, they're gonna have a back to back this week. So honestly, for Tony Khan, this pay per view, it needs to absolutely, it needs to sell out. This is like, you know, you kind of have the gun under you, man. You know, the plate is sizzling. I don't know if I have that. Do I have that, uh, you know, sizzling? No, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, I don't know. This is just something that big that Tony Khan really has to do for his, uh, not just his superstars or for his brand, just kind of himself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know that a lot of people, especially CM Punk said in an interview that Tony Khan is kind of like that recluse, kind of nice boss kind of guy. And uh, he's kind of afraid to kind of push boundaries and kind of, uh, you know, talk to other you know, wrestlers and, uh, well, his, uh, you know, kind of like his employees and kind of be like, Hey, like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, can we step it up here? This, that, and the other, he's kind of like that. Uh, he's kind of like that guy who's afraid to say no. And, uh, you know, I-, I was a shift manager once I was at a fast food, uh, you know, establishment, you know, one of the worst, uh, you know, jobs of my life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just no, it was it was an experience. It was a learning experience, you know. Obviously, everything that happens to you in life is is for a purpose. It's all made to make you a better person. So uh, you know, hopefully, you know, Tony Khan is able to pull it out because if AEW is doing good, that means WWE WWE is gonna do whatever it can to try to be better, which creates better content. So, you know, I love myself some uh, some competition. Absolutely, you know, we play it against each other, you know. I, I'm, I'm just trying as a wrestling fan i'm just trying to play hard to get i'm sorry i'm trying to play hard to get <laughs> i'm just kidding um anyways so guys uh that's all i kind of got for you today hope you liked it uh thank you for tuning in to the gsmc wrestling lorry podcast presented by the gsmc sports network your support means a lot to us so remember to pre- you know superman punch that like and subscribe button and uh yeah um remember to leave us a positive review you know tell me how much uh, you love my eyes or tell me how much you love my new uh my new hairdo. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. You know, that's going to, you know, hook a couple of you guys up to uh, kind of watch me tomorrow. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but I think I might get a haircut tomorrow. No, no. But that's not the point. This is the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer podcast, not the GSMC. Are you getting a haircut tomorrow, Eric? Are you getting a haircut tomorrow? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but anyways, leave a positive review here, here at the GSMC Sports Network. We love peace, love, and positivity. So, um, yeah, honestly, positive review goes a long, long way. And uh, we invite you to also follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter slash X for more content and updates. Like I said before, if you're not a WWE, you know, if I haven't made you a fan yet, we have a lot of other podcasts here. We have sports, 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 sports. We have football, basketball with Nelson. We have the Andrew Tate show. We also have our new soccer podcast, also Hoops and Heels. So, uh, guys, just kind of be a part of the, you know, GSMC uh, Bloodline family, like, or absolutely regret not being a part of it. You know what I mean? Because uh, we are the Bloodline. We are the Bloodline. Uh, making up music. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you once again. And, of course, as always, have a phenomenal day. Hey, yeah.